you go to the barn, which is where we, we keep and maintain the vehicles. This is, um, you know, there's a lot of thought that has been put into that training program. Um, and, you know, I, I can't give enough kudos to the entire team, also to the crew member sevens that, that are kind of the face of it as well. There's a really good balance of making sure you've got enough information, but you also know that now nah, you don't need to know everything that's going on. You see the gantry has retracted. These astronauts are going to space. With that, I'm going to turn it over to our mission control team. Godspeed, New Shepard, and enjoy the flight, astronauts. See you when you get home. With its crew of six, they are screaming up towards the Carmen line. You can see the speedometer on your bottom left there, as well as the altimeter. And we're going to follow along with the flight on the left side of your screen with those milestones. First one coming up here is Max Q. Max Q has been confirmed. Maximum dynamic pressure. It's when the forces on the vehicle, between the atmosphere and the speed are at their are maximum. We punch right through it. As well as punch through that layer of clouds, the vehicle continues on its upward ascent towards space. If you are just joining us, we've had a clean liftoff of New Shepard's 26th flight in this program. We are witnessing the eighth human space flight of New Shepard. We have astronauts 38 through 43 on the vehicle on its way to space. Our next milestone here is main engine cutoff. And what we'll witness is the speed will start to come down, but the uh, the excel excuse me the the altitude will continue to go up. When the speed hits zero, it means we have hit apogee. And Jackie, I think a, a, one of the other cool part of this program is that we slow. You see that kind of slight little hot dog roll. <laughs> <laughs> we got going on of the rocket. We just want to give, well, it's really is just to give the astronauts each a 360 degree view as they're going up, which is so cool. All right, main engine cutoff and separation have been confirmed. And Jackie, this is when our, our astronauts are feeling zero G. Dr. Rob Furl is gonna start his, his experiments up there in the cabin. Hopefully after a little time to look out the window. Yeah, Pre-experimentation. I, I would <laughs> totally steal at least a, a, a couple of looks out of those big gorgeous windows. Just want to give, well, it it's really is just to give the astronauts each a 360 degree view as they're going up, which is so cool. All right, main engine cutoff and separation have been confirmed.
And Jackie, this is when our, our astronauts are feeling zero G. Dr. Rob Furl is gonna start his, his experiments up there in the cabin. Hopefully after a little time to look out the window. Yeah, Pre-experimentation. I would <laughs> totally steal at least a, a, a couple of looks out of the big gorgeous windows. Um, 328,000 feet or 100 kilometers up. And there it is, Apogee. About 340,000 feet. Heard all six astronauts are back in their seat and the booster is screaming on home. Yeah, as we mentioned, that booster is going to return to Earth a lot faster than the capsule because of the aerodynamic nature of the crew capsule. It's coming back to the clouds. <laughs> That's a sweet view of the booster as it's coming back through the atmosphere here. We see the drag brakes have been deployed. There's the relight of that BE-3 engine. That gorgeous hover above the landing pad. And booster touchdown, a successful touchdown of the booster for the NS-26 mission. Always a sight to see. Always a sight to see. I mean, it's been going thousands of miles per hour, and then it comes in landing. You see it just kind of hovers there at five miles an hour. It's such a smooth descent, and it's in landing. And to as, as a reminder to people, this is so critical to the reusability because the, the smoother the landing, the less you jostle the rocket, the less you have to refurbish the rocket, the more you can, more uses you can get out of the rocket. Absolutely, and they're essential in providing a gentle touchdown for the capsule. But as we get closer to the ground here, you're gonna see a retro thrust system on the base of the capsule, um, which does kick up a bit of West Texas dust, but it makes for an even smoother touchdown. Then again, you know, like you said, the already slow speed that the capsule is descending at now. We're just 400 feet away from touchdown. Again, stay tuned for that retro thrust system here. And crew capsule touchdown, welcome home to the newest six astronauts, the Blue Steel team. Once more, what appears to be a completely smooth flight for New Shepard. Uh, our booster touching down at the at the landing pad in a soft landing for our latest crew. Just a beautiful flight up and back. I mean, that is just one of the 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 cleanest flights I've seen from this rocket. But behind every rocket is an extraordinary team. So a big shout out to the entire New Shepard program. What a beautiful flight today. And another congratulations to the six newest astronauts. What a day it has been. Now our capsule uh, recovery team is currently gonna be driving out to the convoy to meet the capsule. They're going to save.